Got in the car this morning, drove until the road stopped, and at the end of the road, there was this little path. Sounds like it leads down to water. So I figured we'd give it a shot. Looks like there actually used to be a road here, like this part is paved, and there's a sketchy little bridge. I'm sure it's safe enough to cross. Let's give it a shot. Moss and vine covered trees and the bamboo in the background. This is a nice little spot. I've been living out closer to nature lately, but I haven't had a chance to come out and explore the area I'm living in at all. And I finally got a nice day. So that's what we're doing today. a really nice spot. Actually, I'm kind of regretting not bringing a towel or bathing suit or something. And I'm pretty sure that this is the end of the line. There's not much further I can go without actually submersing myself in the water, which I will be coming back to do. But for now, there's a lot more to see and explore today. So let's go explore. mountains of Kirishima in southern Kyushu right now. I've been living here on and off since spring and every single time that I've come here the weather has been atrocious. Just nothing but rain. Kirishima actually means the island of fog. It's, it's not an island. It's kind of on the mainland of Kyushu but the fog part holds up. It is constantly foggy. I, it was barely, when I went down there, it was blue skies and things are already... It's not all bad though. The weather here being that unpredictable also has its upsides because it changes every 10 minutes. But I'm just so glad to be back out in nature again. We spent so much of last year exploring and hiking. I was originally going to do a hike today, but I figured rather than Googling for cool places to hike, which I'm sure this area has a lot of, like going out and finally exploring the area while it's not raining, fingers crossed, because the sky is getting worse, would be a pretty good way to spend the day. Also, different car than the last time I was down here. This one's manual. I got a text from one of my buddies who lived in the area and literally just said, Norm, I know a weird spot for you. And in true Tokyo Lens fashion, seems like we have a lot of stairs. His message said, just follow the stairs and had a winking face. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. This is pretty much exactly how I want to spend today. It seems to break off into yet another set of stairs. Which one is it? I know, I know this might be the wrong choice, but these ones are all wide and well kept and these ones are narrow and over. It just feels like this. This is where the adventure is, so. I have 100% made the right choice here. And I can actually see something up there. I'm not sure what it is yet, but let's keep going. Admittedly, the <laughs> stairs, may not be in the best condition. They're fine, they're fine, see? <laughs> Look, there's the path we were on. <laughs> it leads to the exact same place. I have achieved absolutely nothing. Super curious as to what we got here though. So the few stairs down, it looks like we're almost there. What have we here? The sign says it's a cave and a group known as the Kumaso used to live in here. Apparently it did not end, but that's a cave. It doesn't look like a cave. How is this a cave? It just ends. Does that count as a cave? Let's go take a peek. There's actually a, wait a minute. Oh my, oh, and it's cold too. It's so dark. What in the? What? Okay, we're gonna need lights. What is this? What? What are we looking at here? It's 
got stairs. It looks like there's lights here. Did I miss something? Is there like a light switch at the entrance or something? What in, the, okay. Let's see if we can't find where some kind of light switch would be. I don't see anything over here. That makes sense. Also, this seems totally safe with the water coming down on it. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, it's all lit up now. That looks absolutely ridiculous. What is this? <laughs> what is this? This is kind of bonkers. I'm really glad that I found the lights, but why in the world? Why is it painted? It feels like somebody painted the walls of their Minecraft cave or something. It's cool in here. Apparently there's a second cave as well, but the entrance to it is closed off. But this, like this, just what in the world? I'm super curious as to when all of this was done. Like the paint itself looks really fresh and really new, but you see Japan has a lot of really weird touristy spaces or attractions. And a lot of them actually popped up in the eighties when Japan was going through the bubble and people needed to create expenses. Otherwise they would have been taxed up the wazoo. So a lot of them just created these tourist attractions and just dumped a ton. And that's why there are so many really weird, old, beat up, run down or abandoned tourist attractions in Japan. A a lot of those popped up in the 80s. Either way, <laughs> let's keep moving. This was a, a neat little experience. <sighs> Trying to make sure we shut this off too. Why is it under the water though? I just, yeah, I just, I don't want to touch. The cave was moderately interesting. These stairs, by the way, get a solid six, let's say seven out of 10. They're nice stairs, but they're very, very inconsistent in heights. <laughs> and do not let the cloud and shade deceive you. Today is a beautiful and humid 35 degree day here. <sighs> the shade it does nothing. There's this waterfall that I always fly over and it looked really tiny from above, but as I was driving by, it actually looks like it's much bigger. What is, it's like huts and whatnot here. I have no idea if this even lead, this should lead to the waterfall. There's nothing else around here. But I swear, I'm not even trying to find abandoned places right now. This has just become something that naturally happens on Tokyo lens. That's the top of the waterfall, yep. I don't want to be falling it. There's got to be a vantage point that actually shows the waterfall. Do love the little signs though. It's dangerous. Let's not go in here. Kyushu Power Company with their little logo. Yeah, you don't want to be going in there. All right, let's see if we cannot find the vantage point. Oh, what do we got here? Kaki? Are these persimmons? I think there's another walkway down here. Should be fun because they have walking sticks. Can you see the dragonfly on the mushroom? Will I be able to get him? This path isn't too bad at all. When you live somewhere for a while, you have a collection of little places that you like to kind of call your own. Often just built over time as you live there. Tokyo's like that for me. I know so many hidden nooks and crannies in Tokyo and it's because I've spent time doing stuff like this. Do you do this though? When you move out to a new area or even in your own area, do you explore the area and try to find your own hidden little spots that move? Like this has a whole walkway and pathway. It's obviously not a hidden spot, but more often than not, the hidden spots branch out from places like this. Things that just the locals know. It's the locals who will often teach you the coolest stuff and the path goes in two directions. I'm gonna walk towards the waterfall. It's getting to meet and talk to the locals in these areas that gives you the, the gems, the real hidden stuff. <laughs> there you go. That is a much better view. Just as I go to leave from across the river, 
I could hear somebody hiking with bear bells, which means that there are definitely some good hiking paths around here. We found something. We have found something to come back and explore. In fact, even just here along the river, there's actually quite a bit of area to explore. Thought it was gonna rain there for a minute, but things are looking okay. Huh, let's get going. Quick stop out at Kirishima Jingu, one of the major shrines out in this area. And this entire pond is filled with tadpoles and those cicadas are so incredibly loud. I stumbled across this shrine, well, seriously, so loud while doing a road trip a couple weeks, maybe month or two ago. I don't know, it'll be up. And the giant toady gate, that giant toady gate, it just caught my eyes and I didn't have a chance to swing through and check it out. So I wanted to take a quick peek today, but it's gonna have to be a really quick peek, like not like waterfall quick, like actually quick, because there's still at least one more place that I want to show you before the day ends today and that one has a little bit of a time limit on it. Seems like there's actually quite a lot going on in this area. I might have to come back and do an entire Tokyo Lens Explorer video on it but for now let's check out the shrine. Get under the tree cover and it's super dark. We get out here and now it's cloudy. I swear, when I started walking through at that end it was sunny but this is Kirishima Jingu. I feel like it's more about the area around it, the entire complex. So I think one day we're gonna have to come back and do a full walkthrough for Tokyo Lens Explorer and check out the entire area. But before it gets too late in the day, there is one more place that I really, really wanna take you guys. This one I already know and might be my favorite. All right, so this here, this is one of my favorite spots. And let me show you why. This is the approach to the airport and on a nice sunny day, all of these sunflowers are all happy and facing up. I was actually hoping that we would get the sunflower staring up at the sky today but they're all kind of drooping down and sad so this is super nerdy but this is the runway lighting system for runway 34 at Kagoshima Airport so when the winds are right planes will be coming down just overhead here I love it so much I come out here pretty much any day that I can and enjoy the planes coming in and the sun going down. And I know this doesn't really count as a new exploration spot since I come here so often, but I also just really wanted to bring you guys here because plane spotting. Ah. Oh. This lady drove up to me and she said, if it's sunflowers you're after, there are much nicer sunflowers down the road. And that's exactly what I mean. It's the people in the area. You don't even have to approach them half the time. They will approach you and share stuff. And it's collections of little moments like that compounded over time that give you the experience in an area. Because now I know, now I know if I drive down that way a little bit, we'll get nicer sunflowers. And I absolutely love, you don't always have to have the courage to speak to them. Like she was just driving driving by, I made eye contact, I smiled, she stopped the car and she talked to me. And we got another plane coming in. Imagine how much it would suck to be standing in here completely alone and suddenly the lights turn. Son of a 